So from the passage that we've been looking at, uh, Zephaniah 3, verse 14 to 20, and then focusing on verse 17, and today one phrase thereof. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout aloud, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem, for the Lord will remove his hand of judgment and will disperse the armies of your enemy. And the Lord himself, the King of Israel, will live among you. At last your troubles will be over, and you will never again fear disaster. On that day, the announcement to Jerusalem will be, Cheer up, Zion. Don't be afraid, for the Lord your God is with you. God is mighty to save. The Lord takes great delight in you, what we'll focus on today, and quiets you with his love, and rejoices over you with singing. I will gather you who mourn for the appointed festivals, and you will be disgraced no more. And I will deal severely with all who have oppressed you. I save the weak and helpless ones. I will bring together those who were chased away. I will give glory and fame to my former exiles, wherever they have been mocked and shamed. On that day, I will gather you together and bring you home again. I will give you a good name, a name of distinction among all the nations of the earth, as I restore your fortunes before their very eyes. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we've, we've come to the, my fa the favorite phrase of my favorite verse, uh, and it goes like this, the Lord takes great delight in you. And as if this is, uh, in my mind, the mountain peak of this verse. Uh, the verse moves from presence to power to delight to calm to joy. It starts out, the Lord your God is with you, presence, right? God is mighty to save, power. The Lord takes great delight in you, delight or, or joy, the twinkle in God's eye. The Lord calms you with his love, calm, and rejoices over you with singing, song. Divine delight, in my mind, is the pinnacle of this verse because it leads us most into the loving heart of God. Uh, and we need that transforming twinkle in God's eye. Think about it this way. Uh, remember uh, after communism fell in Romania and we saw that 60 Minutes special of all of those babies warehoused in these huge orphanages who never got cuddled, never got cooed over, uh, never had, had any interaction. And, and suddenly after that, 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 uh, that report on 60 Minutes went out, Dozens, hundreds, thousands of babies all around the world were being adopted, and they were finding that they were listless. Because one of the things that happens uh, when there's a twinkle in the caregiver's eye, we know, is that, that uh, uh, children, children's brains begin to develop. They be develop a bond between mother or father and, and child, and, and, and the brain hadn't developed that, the bonds hadn't developed. And, and as they studied these children, uh, for years, now it's been 25, 30 years, um, they found that they had a higher incidence of ADHD, of autism, uh, of, of many behavioral problems, all because they missed the delight in the caregiver's eye from the very beginning. So I want to share with you uh, this morning just three ways in which uh, the twinkle in God's eye transforms us. Uh, that the light gives us joy, it gives us relief, it gives us vision. So first, joy. When does a baby start first, you know, giggling and moving its arms and kicking wildly? And it's when mom or dad are kind of cooing, uh, this baby talking to them, right? Um, and and. There's a direct relationship between adults and adults' inner joy and the twinkle in dad or mom's eye 43 years ago when they were first out. Right? I believe the more uh, of a twinkle that there was back then, the more inner joy that the adult has now. Right? And so it's good news that the Bible tells us from beginning to end that God coos over us. Right? From the literal coo-coo of the morning dove 
to, uh, to a reading of the Bible, which uh, John Calvin called God's baby talk, to, uh, to the greeting that Jesus promised we'll get when we first uh, are welcomed into heaven. Enter into the joy of your Lord, it says. Uh, there's there's a, a twinkle in God's eye from creation, from canon, another word for scripture, and into consummation all the way through. And so that's why the mark of the, 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 the facial expression of the Christian is never the puritanical scowl. It's always a sacred smile. Because the delight in God's eye gives us joy. And the delight in God's eye gives us relief. Uh, now I'm thinking about uh, when we were correcting our kids or grandkids or if you were a teacher in school, and, and particularly in families uh, settings, uh, once the scolding was accomplished, there needed to be a hug, a restoration of the relationship. <laughs> I remember a, a story that uh, Natsuko told me about one of our kids uh, around kindergarten time. They were uh, cleaning their, their bedroom together. And Natsuko says, well, you know, let's clean under your bed, too, because who knows what's under there. And so they, they began cleaning up, and, and Natsuko found a library book that had been scribbled on. And as soon as she pulled that out, the kid started bawling and said, I'm so sorry, I know I'm not supposed to write on it, but I couldn't help it, I could, and I hit it. <laughs> and Natsuko said she had, she had a hard time finishing the scolding because it was such a, you know, woe is me, penitential response. <laughs> so once the kid found out they weren't headed to jail, <laughs> right? uh, uh, and that, that mom couldn't help but laugh, they relaxed and laughed too, right? So the, 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 that's the same way God is with us. You know, the wrong is made right. Christ died on the cross for our sins. And so, so after uh, the wrong is made right, after the confession happens, the smile returns to God's face. God is not like that abusive parent that always criticizes. God is not like that friend that, uh, that held a grudge for 17 years. God uh, brings relief to the twinkle in God's eye. Uh, Dr. King's birthday was Monday, uh, last month. And uh, one of the stories that he's told is that his first best friend was a white boy that lived across the street. And they played together and they had a great time until school. And then the white boy's daddy said, you can no longer play with Mark." And Mark so he was deeply hurt, deeply hurt, such that he said from that time in his life he began to hate white people. Until his parents remember Daddy King was pastor at Ebenezer Baptist Church before Martin was, uh, that until Daddy and Monty King uh, taught him that, you know, Jesus died on the cross to forgive, but we have to forgive other people. You know, we have to even love our enemies. And that teaching transformed American history. The power of the twinkle in the eye. So delight brings joy, delight brings, brings relief, and delight gives vision. Think of that child who's clinging to the couch, looking one way, and notices over his shoulder that dad has a gleam in his eye across the way and maybe she tentatively lets go and waddles over and probably does a face plan in the middle of the walk over. What makes her want to go to the other side of the room to see dad? Is it just because she wants to try to see how far she can walk? I don't think so. I think she sees in, in that gleam in his eye, it's like gravity that pulls her across the room. Uh, she wants to be in that embrace, right? And, and so she sees in her dad's eye what she can be, what she can do. She gets vision through, his, through the vision reflected in his eye. And that's the same thing with God. Warmed and enlivened by God's adoring gaze, we see new possibilities of bringing joy to the gloomy world. And if we haven't been in a gloomy world for the last year plus, what have we been in? Uh, and, and, and so uh, 
we see through God's eyes. I, I think of that uh, Nicky Young's idea of bringing candy canes to every member, and I hope you got yours, uh, the elders bringing them around just before Christmas. You know, candy canes, who wants a candy cane, right? They're empty calories, they rot your teeth, uh, uh, you know, whatever. You know, they even, to, my, to me today, they taste too minty. Uh, and whatever it is. But wasn't that a great idea? Because that little candy cane brought so much joy to so many people. I got emails and, and calls and, and whatever that they were so happy that, that, that the church had done that. In this socially distanced COVID-19 Christmas, it lit a spark of renewed joy. That's what God does. That's how the twinkle in God's eye transforms us and how we can transform the world. So this week, you're going to be out and, uh, out and about with your mask on and people are only going to be able to see you from here on up. What will they see? I bet they're going to see a twinkle in your eye and that will probably, probably be reflected back because you will see the world the way Jesus sees you. Let's pray. God, who has blessed us in so many ways, bless us again with your delight, that we might know how precious we are in your sight, so that we can treat every child of yours, everyone created in your image, with the same delight, that you have treated us. We receive it, and we share it, and we thank you for it. In your name we pray, and all God's people say.